lecture is uh, basically I'm trying to provoke a bit of thinking. And uh, the topic is on healthcare inequalities and national security. What has healthcare inequalities got to do with national security? So I try to answer these two questions. One is whether there's a relationship, and if there is a relationship, what's this relationship? And for this purpose, uh, that's the outline. There'll be some definitions, a framework, and a few hypotheses, and I'll present hypotheses to support uh, this framework, and we'll conclude after that, yeah. Uh, what do we mean by health inequalities? That's your, uh, what we mean is uh, health outcomes in populations. So, Saukya Vishamata in Sinhalese, you see. In populations, not in amongst groups, uh, individuals. And uh, these are some examples. Differences in average health, for example, between rich and poor, between rural and urban, and across income groups. The rich die later. They are healthier than the poorer people. And what do we mean by security? In this presentation, I've used the opposite of security, insecurity. And uh, two measures are used here. One is uh, trust amount of trust people have with each other, and uh, crime, for which we use the uh, homicide level, that's uh, people are killed by others. Not at, uh, there are rules of engagement in war, but combats outside the, the war zone, what happens in, uh, in neighborhoods and in the Kadamandia where people stab and fight and things like that. So what's the framework? Very simple, that uh, health inequalities are either directly linked to insecurity or there's an indirect link. And uh, therefore, if I'm to think of uh, the hypotheses, we have three hypotheses. One is that uh, health inequalities are a result of social inequalities, samaja visamata, that's variations in the society lead to health inequalities? Or is it social inequalities that lead to national insecurity? Or health inequalities leading to national insecurity? So we have the framework, and these are the three hypotheses. So what's the evidence? Uh, as for evidence, for social inequalities, I'm going to use data from income in inequalities. So that's in relation to not the social st status or, or uh, social position, but income. So what's the relationship between income and health inequalities, income and national insecurity, and health inequalities and national insecurity? So, I start with the first one. That is, income inequalities lead to health inequalities. That is your, the average pop variation, the average health and the variation in health is determined by income inequalities. And what's the evidence? Now, this is a very important slide because this on the x-axis is the income of countries, per capita income. That's the life expectancy as a health outcome, the average life expectancy. Uh, what it shows is that initially, the income really matters. So if the income goes up, your health outcomes are very good. But after some time, it plateaus. It's flattening. More income doesn't mean better health for a country. That's a crucial thing, it's, it's for the country. And this red dot is Sri Lanka. You must be very proud of this because from 1960s onwards, we have been outliers. That is, we are doing very well for health with a very low income, something which is not being advertised enough. But I think that's important to note that Sri Lanka is one of the exceptional countries delivering good health and having good health outcomes at a low cost. 
Now, in this part of the graph, it looks as if the income is not the important determinant, but the inequalities which are important. And uh, this is a study which was published, and here again, there's a Sri Lankan here, Professor Shanti Mendis from WHO, and they've looked at uh, socioeconomic inequalities and looked at the health outcomes. And what you find is that in several diseases, the poorer people have higher levels of non-communicable disease, except probably in diabetes. Diabetes is probably an exception. But in all the other cardiovascular diseases, as evidenced by angina, arthritis, asthma, mental illnesses like depression and other comorbidities, you find that the poorer people have higher rates of disease. It's the same for females. So what's the situation in Sri Lanka? We have uh, data coming from this report and one of the co-authors is seated here. This is from the, w uh, from the World Bank and data developed, I think, by Ravi Rananelia's group on mortality from diabetes by socioeconomic status. Now, in the previous slide, you saw that diabetes is an exception. So you find that in Sri Lanka, the richer people have higher rates of diabetes. But it, when it comes to mortality from asthma, you find the exact opposite. And in many chronic diseases, we are finding that the rates are higher in the poorer groups. These are non-communicable diseases. Not, so these are, increasingly we are finding things are, non-communicable diseases are commoner in the poorer people. What about income inequalities and insecurity? Now, there are a lot of data on this. Uh, from several international comparisons, where they have looked at <coughs> income inequalities and trust. There were surveys which have been done in several countries. Income inequalities and homicide. And again, the correlations are striking. More unequal you are, the less trust you have more unequal you are, the less trust you have. More unequal you are, the higher the killing rate, the higher the homicide rate. And you see this even within countries. And this is from an area in Brazil. And you'll see that the male homicide rate is higher in the poorest areas of the country. Now what's more interesting is uh, he do health inequalities lead to insecurity? And there is some data which is coming up and this is a picture of Syria. We all hear about Syria and how, uh, how violence is spreading in Syria. And in fact, some have argued that uh, the reforms in the health sector which went for privatization and uh, widened the inequalities may have contributed to some of the violence in Syria. And that's the graph showing the out-of-pocket expenditure on health. So these, some of these were a result of European Commission and other groups pressing, asking Syria to change its health policies, right? And uh, as a result, the government expenditures went down and the out-of-pocket expenditures went up. So, so far, what I've shown you is some evidence uh, which seem to support this broad hypothesis that uh, social inequalities lead to health inequalities, social inequalities lead to insecurity and health inequalities could also lead to insecurity. 
Now, what's the situation in Sri Lanka? What's happening about inequalities in Sri Lanka? Are we sitting on, on a time bomb? That's the data from Central Bank. If you look at the richest, 20% of the country have 54% of the wealth. The poorest 20% have just 4.5% of the wealth. And that's the progress over the past few years. It becomes more interesting with the next slide because this is a measure of inequality called Gini coefficient. Higher this, higher the coefficient, the worse the inequality. And you'll see in Sri Lanka, it's steadily rising. It's steadily rising, and we see it also. That's uh, rich, that's where the majority of people are, rural, peri-urban, estate, urban. So we see it, and it's widening. So in conclusion, um, on the evidence, uh, I think we, are, we have to take stock of the situation, the emerging situation. And uh, we have to think of uh, how we could narrow these inequalities. Now, I know it's, that's probably another whole workshop or a presentation, but I think we have to really think of a few uh, ideas which have been used in other countries. Narrowing the gap in earnings might sound it's impossible, but now you see even in the West, they're trying to reduce the bonuses of the bankers. And they're saying that the CEO should have a ceiling on his income. That's trying to narrow the income. In uh, places like Norway or uh, Scandinavian countries, when there is an income increase, the lowest get a higher percentage rise than the highest. So all the time trying to narrow the gap. So that's possible. Then pro poor infrastructure, when we are thinking of infrastructure development, we have to think of uh, some of the obvious things, you know, water for all. Why should a farmer in North Central province have to walk miles to collect water uh, for his house when I want to build a house in uh, Batrabulla, the government gives me a tap. That's not on, right? He's also a Sri Lankan citizen. I am also a Sri Lankan citizen. Welfare measures, how to support the informal sector. We have almost 50% of people are employed in without any contracts or anything. When they finish their work, those are the people who are doing construction, who are doing, uh, who are working as farmers. When they finish their work or physically exhausted, there's no one. Only the relatives are there to look after them. And so on and so forth. I think there are certain things which we can think of which uh, to reduce these inequalities. So in summary, that these are the examples. I'll just leave you with these three slides. I've presented some of the evidence. And I think Sri Lanka is sitting on a time bomb. And we have to seriously think of reducing our inequalities and certainly defending the free health service. Because that's, if, you, if we start dismantling that, when poor people go to our hospitals, they will lose all their money in order to cure themselves. Thank you very much.